we have a direct connection to all the other great apes that share the planet with us. We tend to think of ourselves as special with unique capabilities that are different from other animals. But in reality, everything that we do, all of our behaviors, all of our brain functions, our memory processes, our language processes have come about through evolution. And we share many of those capabilities with other animal species. There's no way to understand who we are as great apes without understanding all of our cousins here. As humans, we think we've got these really unique communication skills, our language skills. But we know that we didn't always have language and it had to emerge out of something else. What were those precursor behaviors? What were the behaviors that helped us build a language system over evolutionary time? One of the things that we can't do is look at how they came about because none of our ancient ancestors are still alive. But about six million years ago, we shared a common ancestor, chimpanzees and gorillas. And that means that we will all have inherited similar kinds of brains and bodies and behaviors. Understanding what we've shared allows us to understand our own evolutionary journey. We have this theory that how we use our hands, how we make and use tools lays the groundwork in the brain for how we use and make language. Two behaviors that might look really different on the surface might actually be powered by a similar set of brain processes. And so our study is looking at how those two things are related. For this experiment, we've created a set of puzzle boxes to look at how different ape species use their hands to solve problems. Different kinds of boxes test different kinds of problem solving skills. So this is the easiest one. This is the flat maze. And as you can see, all you have to do is maneuver the nut through the box. This is one of the more difficult puzzle boxes. So it's got a bit of flat maze, but it also has cogs. So that takes a little bit more abstraction, something that has a developmental timeline. So babies won't maybe make these sorts of connections, but as children and apes grow and work with the physical world around them and understand cause and effect, then they might work this one out. It's kind of like putting the words together that form a sentence and getting the goal out the bottom, which is the meaning. So we've tried out our boxes now on great ape species, including orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees. These guys here have all had a go on the boxes. And now we're trying it out on the other great ape species, us humans. When a baby is born, they've got a predisposition for developing language, but they don't have language already. They have to develop it. And what we see happening and unfolding is this parallel between how they're using their hands, manipulating objects, starting to use tools, and how they learn and develop their speech. It's like, I'm sitting. In the future, we may be able to use motor development as a risk marker for language disorders. So understanding both typical development and atypical development, the earlier we can see that something might be deviating from the typical track, this would then allow us to innovate new kinds of interventions, new kinds of therapies with a new understanding of how the brain develops then we can start looking at how to help individuals much earlier. So the primary objective would be that early on, if we see that motor development isn't unfolding typically, by getting in there really early and strengthening those motor capabilities, we're hoping that we'll see a benefit to the language development uh, for those children. I challenge anybody to look into the eyes of any great ape and not recognize yourself staring back. <laughs>